And just moving on to briefly talk about other rarer types of Fellows Danlos syndrome, um, I think it's important to um, highlight this paper that was published by Ines Kapfer and the Austrian group in 2016. So periodontal EDS is an autosomal con dominant condition. It's caused by pathogenic variants in C1S or C1R. And you really see the severe and intractable periodontitis of early onset. You see other features that are more um, what we see in ehlers danlos syndrome, such as easy bruising, joint hypermobility, skin hyperextensibility and fragility, abnormal scarring. And another feature that we see is increased rate of infections. And whilst you may not be able to see this clearly, there's lots of um, oral skin and joint features. But if we look at this section in a bit more detail, the others, you'll see that aneurysms have been reported in 16% of, of cases. Now, this is um, the main paper. There's only um, publication um, of, of this for three families. Um, and of course, this was very much sort of focused around the oral manifestation. So I think this is something that really needs to be looked at in more detail. And Fleur, who is the clinical lead of our service in London and Innes are working together, looking at the um, UK cohort of our periodontal EDS patients in more detail. But what has been reported in this paper is um, uh, cerebral aneurysms, hemorrhages, and aortic dissections. So we are moving into a new genomic era, and we're using next-generation sequencing technologies more and more, as we've already spoken about in previous talks. There's, um, we're moving away from single gene testing, using more panels. Whole exome sequencing is in the clinical setting, and soon whole genome sequencing will be available as well. And I think for EDS at the moment, we're using a very sort of targeted approach using a, a number of genes that are associated with each type. And for now, this is a time and cost effective approach, although this may change. I think it's really important to have um, a lab with the expertise in variant calling. We've already talked about sort of interpretation of variants um, and variants of uncertain significance, which can be difficult for the geneticists. And I think it really is important to make sure that in this era we have accurate phenotyping and that we constantly sort of think and reassess and revise our variant calling. And uh, just one good example of this is um, a paper that we published a couple of months ago on atypical Colfrio one variants. So this is glutamic acid to lysine substitutions that cause vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome with a particular phenotype of tissue fragility and skin hyperextensibility, which is a feature not usually seen in vascular Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. So this is a patient who was seen many years ago by Professor Pope at the age of seven. She presented with facial scarring and um, scarring on her shins and was diagnosed clinically with classical EDS. This was prior to genetic testing being available. And then she was re-referred to our service at the age of 29 because she'd had a um, brachial artery dissection and the possibility of vascular EDS was raised. So she'd had a UTI in pregnancy and an arterial blood gas um, led to the dissection. So this is her at 29. She's got some makeup on, but she really does have quite significant scarring on her face. She's got the scar from the dissection um, repair. She's got hyperextensible skin, uh, redundancy of her skin on her knees. She's also got some thin veins. I don't know whether that's visible. And she had a Col301 um, variant, which was picked up, which was a glutamic acid to lysine substitution. So this was initially reported to, um, by the lab as a variant of uncertain significance. And then when we looked back on um, a few other patients that had variants, and we collaborated with the um, Michael Franks group in France, and we actually reported then on seven, seven different families, 18 affected individuals who had four different glutamic acid to lysine substitutions. And we've been able to reclassify these variants from a class three variant of uncertain significance to class four and five likely pathogenic or pathogenic. But the key features of these, you can see the really severe hematomas that these patients seem to be getting just from very minor injuries. The top one was just from knocking his head against the cot. Um, and 100% of our patients in this cohort had skin hypersensibility, so that overlap with classical EDS, again, highlights the importance for molecular testing. 
So in conclusion, there's several EDS types that are important differentials for vascular EDS. Um, some EDS types are just too rare or we just haven't reported enough to know if there is arterial fragility and that's something that certainly the Rare Diseases Committee are working towards having um, good sort of international connections to report on these things. I think molecular confirmation is important but so is detailed family history and deep phenotyping and whilst we don't have any specific recommendations for these patients we do tend to sort of use our VEDS um, guidance to, to help us with managing these patients. Thank you. Any questions?